Hello, and welcome to Vanessa and Melissa. Hi. So we are going to start with some coffee talk. Yes, we love our coffee talk. And we're going to talk about circumcision. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, we are. I always I, hit you with the big ones. I know. You're like right in there. Well, I mean, this started because I don't even have Facebook, but I found on Facebook an article about a baby recently passing away due to a circumcision. Which is awful. And you, you don't really hear about... The bad stuff. That well, I've never heard a story about someone passing from it. Yeah. But... I do think it's a really, you know, it, it's a bit more controversial of a subject than it might have been in the past. Yeah, we recently put this out onto our social media, and it was an interesting response we got back. Because yeah. I think it's it's also geographically, right, where you yeah. live is, is what kind of answers you're going to get back. So we found a lot of moms saying that they, they don't really think it's a big deal, and right. you just get your well, child Well, our question was, yeah, let's, our question to social media was, is it a big deal? Have you done it? Yeah. Was it traumatic? And so we got a whole bunch of different kind yes. of responses. Yes. And some moms were like, it's no biggie. Like, we did it. Yeah. No big deal. Whereas other moms were like, you know, we did our research on it and we felt like the risk outweighed doing it. And in Europe, it's not common. No. And it's I not think a common thing. That's interesting for us because I think with my son, you know, it, we didn't really think about it. And now after research and how much we're involved in the parenting world, you know, now I am seeing how big of a deal it is. Right. And some people do it for religious reasons. And, you know, we respect anybody's reason for totally. doing it or not doing it. But I personally also did it. And it was more my husband's decision because right. he felt he wanted his son to be like him. Right. And I went along with it because I didn't know anything, you know, different. Right. But to be honest with you, it was a traumatic experience for me. And I don't want to ever have to do it again. So yeah. I get how it's a really difficult one for people to decide on because there are risks. Yeah, I think that that goes back to the whole thing. Whatever you decide to do as a parent, we support it. But you need to make sure you go do the research and yes. your decision is not based on just because. Right? Or just it, because everyone says you should. Right. right? You want to make sure that you're comfortable with it, your husband is comfortable with it, your family is comfortable with it, and that you're doing right, that what's right for that little baby. That's right. you got to be comfortable with it. It's got to be your decision and no judgment. But personally, for mine, I wouldn't want to do it again. I'm sure my husband would. But yeah. For me, I didn't love it at all. Yeah. So it's just another one of those things we deal with on the parenting side. Of so the world. many things to think about. So we think that any parent can relate to this subject, which is losing your temper. I can't. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Or just you know, frustration and totally. anger. Yeah. And hating yourself after. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah. nobody wants to be angry at their kids, and nobody wants to be angry, but it happens you're and you're getting frustrated. You're getting as real as it gets right now. It's right? true. I think that one of the biggest things that does not come in the How to Parent book is how to deal with anger once you become a parent. Right. So that's why today we are speaking with a parenting coach. She's actually a registered nurse, and her name is Kelly Bourne, and she has some fantastic tips about how to manage this anger and deal with your kids. So thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I've it's got my right pen, here. and I've got my paper, <laughs> and we're going to start. Yeah, I'm out, out of the two of us, she definitely has the anger management issue. <laughs> No. Way to just throw it under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. No, I think that this is kind of where we were talking about this earlier, that this is where I don't, I, I, I'm not an angry person. I don't get angry. Mm -hmm. Between the two of us, we know that I don't really raise my voice that much. But, however, I had a conversation with my son the other day, and I had said, you know, all mommy ever wants to do is just be a good mommy for you. And, you know, he said to me, then why do you yell at me sometimes? And I was like, but I don't, you know, but I don't, I don't, like, yeah. but I'm like, but I don't, like, I don't really even yell at him, but I'm like, obviously. But maybe the one time you did have really it stood out him to him, or right? Two times or whatever. Okay. So, yeah. so why do we get to that place? Like, why do we get to that place where we're so angry? Is that even what it is? Like, well, I, I know why. Because of the craziness that happens in your home sometimes. I'm sorry, I'm just being honest. Like two kids who I love to death, but like sometimes I feel like I'm gonna blow my lid. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. to be honest, I'm so excited to talk to you today because like I have, I've yelled at my kids and I'm not proud of it. And it's not something I want to do. Like I, it's the last thing I ever want to do. But like, but it's there's hard, a, right? There's a reason why we get there, right? Oh, totally. And and before I start, I just want to say it's the number one thing that I get emails about that I get calls about. So it's, it's universal. So we're not alone. No, we're not alone. And we all flip our lid sometimes, right? Because we're not robots and yeah. this parenting gig is tough. And like yeah. you said, there's no instruction manual. Yeah. And sometimes we just don't know. We, we don't know what to do. We just right. want to throw our hand, our hands in the air. So the biggest thing is really understanding that anger is a secondary emotion. Mm -hmm. So anger is our way of sidestepping how we're really feeling the more difficult emotions, like we're feeling hopeless, we're feeling guilt, we're feeling shame, we're feeling... Um, Unheard. Sometimes. Yes, exactly. Right. We're feeling disrespected. Yeah. Those things that are that are more difficult to 
to manage right. and to deal with. And yeah. I, I recently read something that really like resonated with me and kind of, you know, shook me was that yelling at your kids is actually considered more harmful than hitting and spanking mm-hmm. your kids. Like if that's not an eye opener to people who think it's okay to yell at their kids all the yeah. time, like yeah. that is big. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because basically what we've done is we've traded spanking for yelling Mm -hmm. when at the end of the day, all we've traded is physical aggression for psychological aggression. But here's the thing that gets me, I think every time is, you know, Vanessa came over and she knocked over the vase. I wouldn't yell at her. Yes, you would. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Sorry. Okay. I might. I'm not. I'm no. I wouldn't yell at her. And I also wouldn't say you should know better. Mm -hmm. However, if a toddler or a preschooler draws on your your walls Mm -hmm. with a Crayola, you should have known better, and how could you do that? And the yelling, and maybe not so much, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like our first instinct is, isn't generally to be like, it's okay. Yeah, it's exactly. more did you like, learn from what you did? Yeah, right here? I know. Yeah. We I won't know. do that again. But, you know. <laughs> well, something that we do at home is we call it the colleague test. So whenever we are starting to feel our temperature rising, we're starting to feel the steam come out of our ears, we think, would I say this to a colleague at work? That yeah. is the Would best I say analogy. this to my grandma? Yeah. Would I say Would I say this to another yeah, yeah, adult? Yeah, spilt milk at the office. Exactly. Because right, totally. you know what? It's never about the spilled milk. Right. Yeah. It's always something else. It's well, always it's true. the underlying like, issue. You're not yeah. yelling or getting mad or frustrated if you have lots of time in the morning to go out the front yeah. door. But what are you doing when they're not, you're dilly dawdling? You're not, you're taking too long yeah, to put your boots exactly. on. Why are you, you, mm-hmm. All these questions, but they are doing the same thing probably yeah. that, that they always do, but it's because we're late. Because exactly. we have a busier day that yeah. day or we're and running. You weren't prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's looking at your triggers. So if you find you're always getting upset at bedtime or in the morning or at breakfast or when it's time to go to hockey practice... Just take note and take take note of your triggers and then look at what you can do, whether it's adding five minutes into the routine, um, helping the kids get out the door. Yeah. I was going to say adding time, I feel like, is a really good solution Mm -hmm. when you're first kind of realizing that this is what's happening too often and it's not a healthy situation, like adding an extra five minutes if you can anywhere. Because mm-hmm. it is always when you're late. And, yeah. and rushing your kids and saying hurry up is so sad. And you don't well, it's just nagging. Nice. Yeah. It's just nagging. Really, one, telling your kids once is information. More than that is nagging. And nobody likes to nag. Yeah. And the other thing I just wanted to add about adding extra time, sometimes we can eat into that time. We add the extra five minutes, but then we're still late. That's me. So, <laughs> so <laughs> thin. Like an extra curl. I know. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm just curling my hair a little more. I know. Exactly. I've got an notes. extra five minutes. <laughs> so what I recommend is making little mini deadlines. Yeah. So that's what we do in the morning, uh, getting our kids out the door for preschool. So we have our time. We know what time we need to start our breakfast. We know what time we have to finish breakfast. Mm-hmm. We kn- and then we have our little deadline so the kids know so that when there's only three minutes left for breakfast I'll just put the microwave timer on yes. okay guys we've got three minutes and then they know when the timer goes okay the timer's going time to get dressed and then it's not about us being the boss yeah or us being the nag it's like yeah. oh time to go it's just part of the routine and it's so, so good set those you're managing deadlines. everyone's expectations and time schedules and it's not yeah. a shock to them so they're not angry that they're being rushed and right? then yeah trying to get the coats and boots and chucking everybody out the door at the last minute when you have those little mini deadlines it really helps keep your day on track yeah, totally. So good. I, I actually was, and just I think it was the fact of what it does to that little child's mind, right? Because mm-hmm. a, a mom blogger, I had read this blog she wrote about that her daughter one day was like, hurry up to her little baby yes. sister, right? And she was like, hurry up, you got to finish that. And she's like, I could hear my voice coming out of my preschoolers to mm-hmm. our toddler. Mm-hmm. And you realize yeah, that, that when you hear your child repeat something that, the you've younger done, one, that you're not especially proud of her, you realize what it actually sounded like, that is an eye opener. Right. Well, and the other thing to realize is our emotions are contagious. Mm-hmm. It's part of our it's our part of our brain chemistry, part of our makeup. They're called mirror neurons. So my feelings and my emotions are contagious. Our kids soak them up like sponges. Mm-hmm. So when we are reacting with anger or frustration, they're soaking it in. So I personally have seen this. I don't know if you guys have, but the the angrier you get, the more that oh, you get it back. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I always just try to remember my say to myself you get what you give Mm -hmm. well I do the talk the crazy person off the ledge if there's a fit kind of thing like take your emotion out of it and Mm -hmm. stay calm and because the crazier you get and the more riled up you get the worse the situation gets the more explosive everybody is and it's just a spiral downhill right right? it's all about looking at the situation from a neutral point of view Mm -hmm. because really when you think about it every situation is neutral and we're just layering on the judgment through our own lens our own belief system whether something's good something's bad yes if you can just look at every situation as being neutral 
it puts you in a, in a calmer frame of mind yeah, and yeah. you can act more consciously and say the things you want to say and mm-hmm. do the things you want to do and act in the kind of yeah. way you want to act. And do the colleague test. I love yeah. this. We're going to have you back again to talk yeah, about definitely. more I love that. but I love that analogy. It makes perfect sense. And if you want more information from Kelly, you can find her on YouTube because she does great videos with great parenting tips and her account on YouTube is Kelly Bourne. And it's on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Kelly, yeah, <laughs> Kelly L. Bourne is my handle. Yes. yes. Thank you okay. so much and stay tuned.